gets the women's lightweight playoffs going inside the PFL King. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to start our semifinals. The winners will earn a spot in the 2019 PFL World Championship to be taking place New Year's Eve, fighting for one million dollars. To kick it all off right now, we have the women's lightweight playoffs, brought to you by Cage Muscle. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, she specializes in jiu-jitsu, standing at five feet six, weighing in at 156 pounds. In 15 professional bouts, she has a record of 12 victories and three defeats. Here is the number four seed, fighting out of Maratua, Brazil, La Out of the red corner, she is a striker, standing at five feet, five inches tall, weighing in at 153 pounds. In 26 professional bouts, this veteran has an impressive record of 21 victories, four defeats, and one no contest. Fighting out of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, here is the number one seed, Your referee in charge, Chris Tinoli. Wait, semi-final action here. Larissa Pacheco there in the black. Sarah Kaufman in the red. The win fight for one million dollars. No touch of the gloves. Pacheco gets right to it with a one-two. Kaufman closing the distance here. Long punches there from Pacheco, trying to take advantage of her size. Nice right hand there by Pacheco. Another combination. The ones and twos searching for the face of Sarah Kaufman. She's sharpshooting from the outside. She's being pretty accurate. And I'm talking about Pacheco. Kaufman's picking off some of those with her hands, but she's eating some of those shots, too. At only 25 years old, Larissa already the veteran of 15 MMA fights. And she's only 25, but some of the biggest tests of her career, Eve, were six years ago when she was fighting championship caliber individuals. Yeah, she fought Jermaine Durand to me, Jessica Andrade inside the UFC at 19 years old. Five years, six years later. I can't tell if that's a, a scratch or blood coming down the cheek Pacheco. of Sarah Kaufman. Yeah, Pacheco catches a kick and dumps Kaufman to her back. Kaufman looking to sweep. Oh, she's got one hook in. She's trying to reverse her here, Kaufman. Very wiry. We had a really fascinating discussion in the fighter meetings, Randy, with Sarah Kaufman about the difference between grappling with female partners and with men, how the weight is distributed differently, how the flexibility is different, and clearly her own flexibility on display as she reaches the left leg all the way up and over Larissa Pacheco. I've been very impressed with Sarah Kaufman for a lot of reasons, but she's a very cerebral fighter. That was a really interesting discussion. And I thought she was spot on. She, she was absolutely correct. Pacheco inside the guard of Sarah Kaufman. Kayla Harrison, number two seed, warming up in her dressing room. Nice job by Pacheco to put Kaufman right back on the deck. Looked like she was almost up. And there's something disheartening when that happens. You're almost away, you're up, and boom, you're right back on the bottom again. Yeah, it's very frustrating. You can see here on the ground the size disparity between these two fighters. They're in the same weight class tonight, but Larissa Pacheco cut weight to get here. Sarah Kaufman walks around less than this. Here's Sarah Kaufman's corner. Not much guidance there, just watching, trusting his veteran fighter to get herself out of this position on the bottom. One of the things, Randy, when you're fighting against someone who's so experienced on the ground, even if you're on top, oftentimes they're just waiting for you to posture up, to make a mistake, to create some space, and then they pounce and try and grab an advantage. There. Give you that little bit of daylight where you can find your way out from down there. Uh, Checo doing a nice job of floating on top and 
smothering Sarah Coppin, but Sarah, you get the sense that she's waiting for that little moment where she can explode and potentially get up. And Eve, there's a lot of advantages to that. One of those, if this fight keeps going deeper into rounds, it's an energy conservation thing. Even if you're on your back and you're waiting to make the big moves, you're not constantly bridging. You're definitely saving some energy, but at the same time, you're not making the person on top expend a lot of energy and having to, to move in position and float on top of you to control you. But Sarah Kaufman's a smart fighter, man. She's been around, she's been a high level fighter since the Strike Force days. The Strike Force has been the best to get your guard. This is Larissa Pacheco's Nice guy said that the corner did not want Larissa Pacheco's hand stuck underneath Sarah Kaufman. This is a high-level fight, man. I, I watch what these women are doing, and a lot of, a lot of times they're making the right moves. They're, it's a very cerebral fight. They're both thinking about it. Sarah Kaufman is a cerebral fighter. Larissa Pacheco is bigger than her, but it doesn't matter when a fighter is smart. They do the right things, but Pacheco is doing everything she needs to do. That shows us how the women's game of mixed martial art has come so far in such a short time. Some ground and pound here from Larissa Pacheco. 20 seconds remaining here in round number one of this women's lightweight semi-final bout. Sarah Kaufman, the number one seed on her back underneath Larissa Pacheco. Couple of left hands for Pacheco to try and close out the round. Score some points in the judges' eyes. Round two when we return. Sean O'Connell, Randy Couture, Eve Edwards, cage side, women's lightweight semifinal action. Larissa Pacheco in the black and gray, Sarah Kaufman in the red. The number one seed, Sarah Kaufman, spent a good amount of that first round, Randy, on her back underneath the attack of Larissa Pacheco. Yeah, we talk about conserving energy from there, but she also lost the round from yeah. there. And Eve, the striking display early from Larissa Pacheco is what set up that takedown. She's trying to stay at distance, use her size advantage. Stay at distance, use her size advantage, and sh throw straight punches. She's going straight down the pipe. Now Sarah's moving her head and trying to slip as she comes in. And as we've seen Larissa miss a little more this round. So Sarah's making adjustments. Coffin's got a little cut right over her left ear. It's causing that little bit of blood. Oh, nice, nice. right hand there lands for Larissa Pacheco. And a hook on the exit. Throwing everything with intent. They're straight Eve, but there's a lot behind all these punches for the larger fighter. Yeah, she's putting some heat on that. She 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 wants that rematch with Kayla Harrison. She wants to be able to prepare for her and take that win back. Remember, she's if, gotta you, get through coffee first. if you watch regular season action, Larissa Pacheco and Kayla Harrison met in the regular season. Harrison won by decision, was very displeased with the performance, left the cage very upset. Larissa Pacheco even more upset with the loss. She wants the rematch, and of course that rematch would come potentially in a championship for a million dollars. Three and a half minutes left here in round number two. Seen some great counter punching by Larissa Pacheco. Every time Kaufman gets in range and throws something, Pacheco's answering and hitting her right back and giving it right back to her. Pacheco said this was a great camp for her. She came in leaner, easier weight cut. Definitely very prepared to take on a fighter so experienced like Sarah Kaufman. Or one two is from Larissa Pacheco. And Larissa is dictating the range. She's staying on the outside, and when she decides that these that this exchange is over, she can just lean back, bring that weight back to the back foot, and Sarah can't get to her. See, look at that. Nice right hand, right on the forehead there of Sarah Kaufman. The veteran game facing it, but you can see the redness on down that center line of Sarah Kaufman's face, forehead, nose. 
taking some punches. There's a big right hand from Kaufman. Nice overhand right. She's been trying to land that and measure that this entire round. She's trying to time Pacheco coming in with her jab. That's how she landed it the one time. She's slipping over that and firing that right hand. Blood pouring from the nose now of Sarah Kaufman, the number one seed veteran trying to solve the puzzle of the young, hungry Larissa Pacheco who earned her spot in these playoffs with a armbar victory in the first round over Bobby Joe Diel, who we will see later against Kayla Harrison. You see that blood come out of Sarah Kaufman's nose. That gonna, that's going to make it hard to breathe. And when it gets hard to nice breathe... Nice counter by Sarah Kaufman. Beautiful. When it gets hard to breathe in these fights. Great balance by Kaufman. Able to pull the head down, avoid the takedown, pull the head down, and now hang on the neck of Larissa Pacheco. Pacheco's doing the right thing. She's fighting hands right here. She's blocking the back take. Good job by Pacheco. Tell you what, with that much blood in the equation here, Randy, a choke, it's, it's slippery. Yeah, absolutely slippery. I don't think a lot of people realize how slick that is. It's uh, securing a very tight submission, a lot more difficult. 40 seconds left in the round here. Pacheco grinding Sarah Kaufman against the cage. The Canadian trying to land a knee. Knee to the body there from Pacheco. Coming to the close here of round number two, and Larissa Pacheco, the four seed, drags Sarah Kaufman to the mat, perhaps to secure the round. Round three when we return on ESPN2. There's a nice long straight jab right on the button, and that looks to have started the bleeding out of Sarah Kaufman's nose. Larissa Pacheco, the number four seed, in the black and gray with an impressive performance so far. Good enough for two rounds to none on your scorecard, Eve. So far, I've got Larissa up two rounds to none. The second round was closer, but she did land more effective punching and landed the only takedown in that round. Significant damage on the face of Sarah Kaufman, including that blood here at Mandalay Bay. Women's semifinal in the lightweight division. The winner of this bout continues to our New Year's Eve championships for a title and a million dollars at Madison Square Garden. Right now, Sarah Kaufman looks like she's been in a fight. Marissa, Marissa Pacheco looks like she's been out for a run. Impressive performance so far by the young Brazilian. There's Kayla Harrison, a favorite here. On semi-final night for the 155-pound women, two-time Olympic judo gold medalist to take on Bobby Joe DL, who stepped in after Jenna Fabian was forced to withdraw due to medical issues. Uppercut attempted there by Larissa Pacheco. Nice overhand right by Kaufman, answered with the uppercut. Kaufman de definitely pressing the action and trying to hunt Pacheco down. But the footwork by Pacheco is very, very good. She counters very, very well. Another overhand right, searching for Sarah Kaufman. She's found more success in controlling the distance here in round three. She has, but she hasn't found success in controlling these exchanges. Pacheco is still landing the big punches on the inside. Kaufman's landing some shots, but they don't seem to have any effect on Pacheco. We talked about a size difference here potentially being an issue in this fight. And even when Sarah Kaufman does land, Larissa Pacheco able to shrug it off. Yeah, she's doing well also hiding hiding that chin behind the shoulder. She's rolling with some of these punches now. I think she's making better reads at this point on Sarah Kaufman. Now will she be able to counter any of these punches that Sarah Kaufman's firing at her? Well, Sarah's nose is an absolute mess. Jack was in complete control. Although this fight isn't, isn't chaotic, Pacheco is in control, slow, pa even pace. 
Round three, halfway gone here in women's lightweight semifinal action. You can see the, the numbers down there at the bottom, the Cajunomics numbers. Sarah Kaufman actually outlanding Larissa Pacheco, but the more damaging shots, at least from a visible perspective, coming from the young Brazilian. I bet you we look at our fight. Oh, no, that was a big, nice right hand. Kaufman finally landed a nice one. And again, Pacheco just seemed to shrug it off and get right to the clinch. She gets to this clinch, and she will attempt here with two minutes remaining to drag Sarah Kaufman to the mat, where they spent most of round number one. Trying to take the mat here. She can step behind and trip or outside trip. Drags Sarah Kaufman to the mat, compromises that post with the left arm, and now goes to work with her right hand. Larissa Pacheco trying to make a statement. She wants a finish here. The blood pouring down onto the mat inside the PFL Smart Cage. Coming up on one minute remaining, that blood is pouring, Randy, from the nose of Sarah Kaufman. Nice Kaufman job by takes Kaufman. the back, she's got back. In. She, Oh, she slides up. There's that slipperiness we're talking about. We talked about the blood and the slippery situation. And now Pacheco standing over Sarah Kaufman with 40 seconds to work. She'll step down into a control position rather than opting for the big ground and pound. Perhaps feeling like she has this fight in the bag, doesn't want to take any risks. Reigns a big right hand down. Larissa Pacheco hips in. Hips in, head up. This is a position that some of our other guys have kept their heads down in this position. This is exactly what I was talking about. She can pick her shots now, find those holes, and damage. She's showing a high level of fighting right now. Fight IQ. She, she's doing everything right, and she's dominating a veteran, a former Strike Force world champion. And Larissa Pacheco finishes the round and the fight on top of the veteran Sarah Kaufman. 25 years old, 15 fights deep, and perhaps securing a spot in the New Year's Eve championship, Larissa Pacheco. She said she wanted that rematch with Kayla Harrison. She held up her end of the bargain. Now it's Kayla's turn. Very impressive performance by Larissa Pacheco. She knew what was on the line, and against a veteran like Sarah Kaufman, she knew exactly how to get it done. Great coaching, great execution by Larissa Pacheco. Don't forget, tomorrow on Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo, it's number 10 Penn State taking on number 17 Iowa at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. That'll be at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central on ABC and on the ESPN app. Let's go Hawkeyes. It's been since 2011, five in a row for Penn State. Iowa's got to reverse that trend. Coming up next, the two-time Olympic judo gold medalist, Kayla Harrison taking on a last-minute replacement opponent. Bobby Joe DL, the Canadian striker, stepped in on last-minute notice. Let's take a look at our Cajunomics numbers here for Larissa Pacheco and Sarah Kaufman. Kaufman actually outlanded Larissa Pacheco by one. But the four takedowns for Larissa Pacheco, the dominant control in the first round, and the accumulation of heavy shots, damage, visibly, it would appear that Larissa Pacheco dominated this fight. I agree 100%, and I think that was the determining factor, the effective striking and counterpunching of Larissa Pacheco. If you have a size advantage, it's a good idea to put that thing to work 
Not every fighter is able to do it. Larissa Pacheco displayed excellent acumen in that regard tonight. She did, and she did it from all, multiple positions. She did it right here in the wrestling and getting to that top control position. She's able to run Sarah Kaufman over and, and maul her from the top, landing big shots and control that top spot, never allowing Kaufman to get under her hips and transition or reverse her. She did it also from the outside with her striking. She, she was able to land punches on the outside, stay long, and let make Sarah Kaufman fall short with some of her punches. Yes, Sarah got a few in there, but you can see from their faces that Larissa Pacheco was in control of the striking of this fight also. Right here, beautiful, beautiful trip. After missing the first attempt at the takedown, she follows it up with a trip, controls that upper body, takes the feet away, and does a great job once she's on top. She, she, she shows a high level of fight IQ in this fight, and I'm very impressed with her tonight. The crew mopping the blood off the floor of the PFL Spark Cage, and Lillian Garcia has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. And the totals are 30-27, 30-27, and 29-28. All for your winner by unanimous decision and advancing to the 2019 PFL Championship in the women's lightweight division. So the number one seed at women's lightweight goes down. Larissa Pacheco advancing to a championship date on New Year's Eve at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Get ready. Uh-huh. Listen. What you want to do? If you don't strike first, that's when they gonna come at you. Yeah. And you know it's true. Don't let your life get worse. Being timid, that ain't cool. Nah, you gotta wake up, grab your crew and lace up. Make it move right now, cause.